Hey guys, welcome back. So we're going to look at simplifying algebraic expressions using properties. So we have lots of ways to simplify expressions. So far we've looked at some combining like terms, we've looked at all kinds of exponent rules. So now we're gonna tie some of that together. So properties help us to rewrite equivalent expressions. Okay, so we're just writing them in a different way. So first we're going to talk about something that should sound familiar to you, the distributive property. Now remember, distributing is just a fancy word for multiplication. So if you read this aloud, you should hear multiply. So for the first question, I have four times the quantity x plus two y minus seven z. So always we wanna think about PEMDAS. So if we look in the parentheses, x, two y, negative seven z, None of those are like terms, so we can't combine anything. So then we're just left to do our multiplication. So let's go ahead and do that. So to everything here is being multiplied by four. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna distribute. So one thing at a time. So one term at a time. Four times x gives us four x. Four times positive two y plus eight y and four times negative seven z, negative 28z. Again, x, y, and z, there are no like terms, so we are done. That's it. Okay, so this was one term that we were multiplying by three terms. So one times three, we still ended up with three terms. This next one's gonna work a little bit different. So we have x plus seven, Oh no, sorry. The quantity x minus seven times the quantity x plus three. Okay, so we have two terms, x and negative seven, times another two terms, x and a positive three. So two terms times two terms, we should end up with four terms. Now, there's two different ways that we can do this. Luckily we have two examples. So I'm gonna show you, um, two different methods that you can use and you just pick which one you like when you're doing your homework and you try them on your own. So the first term that I'm going to distribute is the x. So I want to make sure that I multiply x by both of my other terms. So first I'm left with x times x. So how many x is that? Two. Well how do we write that? Remember it's x to the first times x to the first. So that gives us an x squared. Then we have x times positive three, so plus three x. Now we're going to distribute our negative seven. So negative seven times x minus seven x and negative seven times positive three, negative 21. Now um, some people call what I just did FOIL, the FOIL method. You do the first, the outer terms, the inner terms, and then the last terms. I just think about it like distributing my first term and then distributing our second term. Okay, now I can simplify this a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. I have like terms. I have a positive 3x and a negative 7x, so that should give me negative 4x. And then I'm just going to bring down my negative 21 and my x squared. Beautiful, simplified nice and in standard form, so we are all set. All right, so our next example is another binomial times a binomial, so 2x plus 4 times the quantity x minus 6, so another two terms times two terms, so we should end up with 4. Yes, we could possibly simplify to get less, but we should end up with 4 when we multiply everything. Now, this first example, we just used the distributive property, some call it FOIL. This next one is using box method. So to use box method, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a box, and I have two terms times two terms, so I'm gonna set up a two by two box. And on the outside, I'm gonna set up my terms, so I have two X and a positive four, 
and a 1x and a negative 6. You may recognize this from something that you've done in science class. If not, you should see it soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply. So 2x times x gives me, remember these have our invisible ones, so 2x squared. In case you were wondering, that x has a 1 in front of it, so 2 times 1 is 2, x times x, x squared. All right, 2x times negative 6x gives us negative 12x. And then I'm going to work with this, so 4 times x, 4x, and 4 times negative 6, negative 24. Okay, just like last time, let's go ahead and simplify. So we have 2x squared, that's my only x squared term. And, but I do have a couple with x's. So negative 12x and positive 4x leaves us with negative 8x. And then don't forget our minus 24. Beautiful. Okay, um, so if you want, feel free to pause the video at any time if you want to try an example on your own. If not, you can just keep going with me. Okay, so our last one, a <clears throat> little bit more challenging, a little bit more going on. So we have 4a squared b to the fourth times the quantity. Oh, I want a little more room than that. times the quantity 2a squared b cubed plus 3a cubed b minus 7a to the fifth b to the fifth. Wow, we have a lot going on. Okay, actually I'm gonna double check, make sure I wrote it down right. a squared b to the fourth, a squared b cubed b. Okay, good. All right, so Order of operations, we always want to get begin with that. So first I'm going to look at my parentheses to see, can I simplify this? 2a squared b cubed plus 3a cubed b. Well, are they like terms? Well, I have an a squared b cubed and an a cubed b. They are not like terms, so we cannot simplify the parentheses. All right, so now we're just going to head to multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply my first term by my first term in parentheses. So 4a squared b to the fourth times 2a squared b cubed. Now you see why we have to start off with those exponent rules. So 4 times 2 gives us 8. a squared times a squared. So when Madsen tells me when I am multiplying, I add my exponents. So a to the fourth. And then b to the fourth times b cubed is b to the seventh. All right, let's do it again. We have plus, so 4 times 3, positive 12. a squared times a cubed, a to the fifth. And b to the fourth times b to the first, b to the fifth. All right, and then on the end, we're going to tack on that minus 7a to the fifth, b to the fifth. You can keep it in parentheses if you're not, but the only thing it's being multiplied by is a negative 1, so it's not really necessary. All right, last thing I want to do is see, well, can I add or subtract any of these? So I'm looking for like terms. All right, so I got a to the fourth, b to the seventh, a to the, nope, those aren't the same, a to the fourth, a to the fifth, out. All right, a to the fifth, b to the fifth, a to the, hey, there we go, we've got some like terms. So 12a to the fifth, b to the fifth, minus 7a to the fifth, b to the fifth, leaves us with five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and positive 5 because we have more positives. So 8, a to the 4th, b to the 7th, plus 5, a to the 5th, b to the 5th. I would say, yeah, that's definitely a simpler form than what we started with. Awesome. Okay, so again, you've got either FOIL method you could use using all that distributive, you can use box method, completely up to you. So let's look at some real world application. So we're going to write an expression to represent the situation. 
Coach Smith is buying equipment for his soccer team. He has 11 players, and each player needs three uniforms, two shin guards, one ball, and two pairs of cleats. All right, apparently you are fancy if you play on Coach Smith's team. So first thing we start off with, we have 11 players. That's probably kind of important. So what do they all need? They need, each player needs three uniforms. So I'm going to call that 3U. Um, two shin guards and two shin guards. I need everything, so I'm just going to add one ball, one B, or just B, doesn't matter, and two pairs of cleats, so plus two C. Okay, did I have all my information? Three uniforms, two shin guards, one ball, two pairs of cleats. Cool. Oh, no. That's what one player needs. How many do we have? 11. So with this, what are we going to do? Hopefully you're saying multiply it all by 11. Great job. So smart. All right. So now let's put it to some use. It says if each uniform costs $48, each shin guard costs $5. Okay. Let me just go ahead and underline stuff as we go. So uniforms are 48. Shin guards are five. Uh, balls. 17 and cleats 89 so determine how much coach smith will spend before taxes on equipment for his soccer team i'm just gonna go with probably a lot so let's see we've got 11 times all right three times 48 plus two times five Plus 1 times 17. Okay, being a former soccer player, I can tell you that these numbers are a little bit off. Um, plus 2 pairs of cleats for 89 bucks. I don't know what the heck soccer ball you're finding for $17. It's probably not a very good one. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify. So I'm going to simplify in my parentheses first, and then I'll multiply it all by 11. Okay, so 3 times 48, well, 3 times 50 is 150 minus 246 brings me to 144. Plus 2 times 5, so 10. Plus 17. Plus 2 times 89, well, 2 times 90 is 180 minus 2 gives me 1. What did I say? 180? So 178. All right. Now I'm going to use a calculator to check my work. Not saying that I don't trust my mental math, but I don't really trust my mental math. All right. Everything looks good so far. So I'm going to find the sum. And I end up with 11 times 349. And 11 times 349. So Coach is going to be spending, before tax, a total of $3,839. Wow. He must love his players. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was all practice with the distributive property. So it's just multiplication, but always pay attention in case you need to use your exponent rules when multiplying. Now another, again, its properties are all about rewriting. So another thing that we have is the commutative and associative properties. Hopefully you've heard of those in the past, but I know it's been a little while. So commutative properties just reorders. So it just rearranges the order of stuff, whereas associative actually regroups. All right, um, so let's see. Oh, I just rewrote the examples. All right, cool. So identify, in your own words, define commutative and associative properties. Oops, done. Reorder, regroup. Okay, 
So identify the following properties used in the examples. Okay, so we have x, the quantity x times 5 times y equals y times the quantity 5 minus x. Okay, um, whenever there are parentheses involved, now this is where I need you guys to hold up, so hold up, because I have a lot of people who as soon as they see parentheses, they just assume associative because, you know, it regroups and parentheses are grouping symbols. Um, okay, yes, that is very true. However, <clears throat> they can totally give you something that's commutative property with parentheses involved. So don't just make that assumption. But that is what I'm going to bring my attention to first is the parentheses. So this one has an x times 5. This one has a 5 times x. So did I reorder what was in the parentheses or did I completely regroup different stuff? Well, x times 5, 5 times x, it's the same stuff. It's just written in a different order. So this is definitely the commutative property. And I'm going to be lazy, so that's as much as I'm writing. All right. <clears throat> so this next one, we have 2x plus 3 times the quantity 4 minus x. Okay, so now they rewrote it 2x times 4 minus x plus 3 times 4 minus x. What? That doesn't look like regrouping or reordering. Hold on, let's break down what they did. So they took 2x and they multiplied it by 4 times minus x. So they took 2x and they multiplied it by 4 and minus x. All right. And then they took positive 3 and multiplied it by 4 and minus x. Oh, now I see. They didn't use commutative or associative. This is definitely just showing the distributive property. All right, so I imagine what the last one's going to be, but let's go ahead and check it out anyway. Look at those parentheses. 3x plus 8 and 7 plus 8. Did, re did we reorder or did we regroup? Is there different stuff in our grouping symbols in our parentheses? 3x plus 8, 7 plus 8. Yep, definitely different. All right, so this is your associative property. Yes, you may abbreviate. It better not be three letters. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And go ahead and get some practice on your own. Let's see how you do.